But first, breaking tonight, Jacksonville City Council members have rejected the multi-million dollar project to build a multi-purpose development in Lot J at TIAA Bank Stadium. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Heather Crawford. And I'm Anthony Austin. So you all know this has been a hotly contested project, which, had it passed, could have cost $400 million in taxpayer money in the end. Now a devastating blow that has a lot of people asking, what now? On your side, David Jones was inside City Hall for the vote. He joins us live now with what was discussed to come to this vote, David. Anthony, it's really difficult to understate just how shocking the outcome of this vote was. The majority of council members, even those who went in tonight planning to vote against Lot J, pretty much accepted that it was almost a done deal that it would get approved. As we've said, though, has now been rejected. It needed a two thirds majority vote in city council to get that approval. That would have been 13 votes out of 19 council members did not achieve that. It was it was failed seven votes, seven no votes to 12 yes votes. So big question now, what is this? mean for the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Team President Mark Lamping, who you're going to hear from in a moment, says there are no plans to move forward with any kind of development on Lot J in the future. Instead, focus now shifting across the street to development over at the shipyards. Now, I did ask about the Jags future in Jacksonville. He said they're still looking to put a better team on the field to focus on stadium upgrades, but that a more vibrant downtown is still a big key piece of the puzzle for keeping the Jaguars here in Jacksonville. He said the Jags belief in downtown has not changed because of the outcome of the vote tonight. I also want to show you a tweet from Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry. His office negotiated this deal and he's been pushing it hard. The mayor saying in part, quote, this sends a clear and negative message to economic development in our in our downtown and city. It's unfortunate, but Lot J will not happen. I look forward to continue working on all the needs of our city for all of our citizens. Let's take a listen to Jags President Mark Lamping first, then Lot J opponents, Council President Tommy Hazuri and Councilman Garrett Dennis. I think it's I think it's time to turn the page on Lot J, you know, uh, so we'll we'll leave that behind. And uh, as I said, you know, we uh, uh, the next step was going to be development on the shipyards. Uh, we're going to focus our attention on that. Uh, we'll go through the process for the shipyards, which which will go through DIA and then we'll see how that goes. And I blame the mayor. I can't blame Cordish or, or the Jaguars because they do what every developer does. They try to get the best deal that they can. And I don't blame them, every developer. But we can't set an example today by supporting this bill and then We've already set a precedent for other developers to come in and want the same thing. I mean, I wasn't going to support, uh, you know, any you know, high profile project if the taxpayers were getting screwed in this project, in this project, this deal, they were getting screwed. And Councilman Garrett Dennis, who you just heard from, ended up being one of the swing votes that voted against this project, as well as Councilwoman Joyce Morgan. He told me this afternoon as he was going in that he still didn't know which way he was going to end up going on the project. And you, of course, you saw his vote uh, again, a shock in City Hall, a blow to the mayor's office. But those council members who voted against this deal maintained that they didn't like the way it was negotiated. They said it was negotiated behind closed doors and they felt that the deal was one sided toward the development team. Now, when it comes to the shipyards, Mark Lamping saying, that's where the focus is going to be. He wouldn't say whether the timeline would change because of what happened, but the big difference at the shipyards, he says, will be going through the Downtown Investments Authority and would still require eventually the approval of City Council. We're live at City Hall. David Jones, First Coast News, on your side. 